And welcome back everyone, welcome back to more Blackwell Epiphany. Last time, that priest dude, Michael, gave us a lot of names. Did I write them down in my phone? Maybe. Where do I find my phone? Uh, oh well. Anything in here? Yes! Ooh, a lot of people. Maybe we'll find out some more about them. I'm thinking of going to the police. But let's, let's ask Madeline about them, maybe she knows something. Madeline? Yes, Blackwell. Madeline? What about these people? Michael said that a man named Benjiro ran the Grace Group meetings. My host has said as much to me, yes. Sadly, he does not remember much about him. I really want to know more about this Benjiro dude. I wonder what his deal is. Could you tell me about Jeffrey? I'm afraid not. Okay. You're pretty useless so far. Could you tell me- I'm a- Do you know anything about Peter Fielding? He was in the Grace Group with Michael. I have never met him. He passed away before I became bonded with my host. Michael believes his soul was already taken. He might be right, but he may not be. If his spirit still exists, you are the ones to find it. What about Heather? Do you know anything about Heather Goffstein? She was in the Grace Group with Michael. I know of her, but I have never met her. She passed away before my host and I became bonded. I never encountered her spirit. Michael believes her soul was already taken. It is certainly possible, but I refuse to lose hope until I see the evidence. So do I. I really hope her soul wasn't taken, but I fear the worst. Well, I suppose we'll talk to you soon. Of course. Of course. Indeed. Very much so. So let's go to the police. Maybe I can get more info on all these dead people. It seems like Michael's the only one left alive. Officer Palmer? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find someone named Benjiro. He ran some kind of self-help circle called the Grace Group. Hmm. Let's see. No. Nothing on file. Sorry. So it must be... I don't know if it's his real name or some sort of fake name to protect himself because he's doing evil. Do you have a record of a Jeffrey Dutta? He was killed in a hit and run. Let's see. Yep, hit and run, like you said. Technically, the case is open, but nobody has any hopes that it will be solved. Damn. Do you have a record? That's hmm, okay. Yep, hit technically. So that's pretty much a dead end? Can you tell me anything about the death of a Mr. Peter Fielding? Okay, let's see. Okay. Furious typing. Yep, here he is. Peter Fielding, age 54, owned a fitness center in Murray Hill called Fields Gym. He fell off a ladder while fixing a light bulb in the locker room. Hit his head on the bench and bled to death. Nobody found him for several hours. An ambulance was called and pronounced him dead at the scene. Nothing more than that? That's pretty open and shut. Accidental death. I'm not too sure if it was an accidental death. Death? We're gonna find out. Do you have any record of a Heather Goffstein? Let me check. Nope. Nothing on Heather Goffstein. Sorry. Interesting. Because I think we know she's dead, but... Hmm. Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. Sure. I want to visit um, George Austin's, Austin's place again. To his apartment. Maybe the ghost in here is Heather. Or maybe I'm wrong. Joey, could you come out here? What is it? What is it? Huh. Locked. I know. I know. Now, because she has a note in her apartment that says, I know about Heather, signed Jeffrey, probably, she must be involved in some way. Hi there. Hello again, mister. What brings you by? Oh, uh, you know, just trying to figure out your name. Come on, what's your- No, you'll figure it out. Fine. I can't even consult my notes to guess her name. It's pretty annoying. Are you sure you don't know- No. Please stop asking about it. Oh, I never will stop well, asking whoever. about it. You annoy me. Hey, this looks like a nice place. 
At least it hasn't closed down, even though the owner kind of died. Looks nice and warm in there. Of course, so would an ice factory right now. <laughs> an ice factory sounds great. It says members only. It says me Do I have to become a member, I wonder? It seems to open with a key card. Oh, that's what they mean by members only. Well, Joey is definitely a member. No barriers. Run, run, run like a hamster on a wheel. Yep, pretty much. A calendar with a marker pen attached. Anything special about it? Oh. It's a number on the calendar. I can't do anything with it. <laughs> I love the re remix of the theme in the background. It's very techno. It's a number on the calendar. Well, seven is a uh, red, red marker. It's important. Do, 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 Looks like do, that do. picture frame fell off the wall. Damn. I can't. I want to see that picture. Looks like some kind of headshot photo. Probably someone famous who uses the gym. Let's see here. It's her. It's the ghost from the apartment. Tanya Corsi. Hey, wait a second. Wait a minute. Is that? Yeah, that's the spook from George's roof. Well, now we know who she is. Busted. She's quite pretty. Okay, now we know her name. Great. <laughs> Joey, let's go to the ladies' locker room. Hey, anyone in here? Anyone? Please? <laughs> Please. Well, that was disappointing. Yeah, sorry. No ladies changing in there. Anyone? Nobody here. Thankfully. Does oh, it look right? no. Never mind. Seriously, does it look right? Does what look right? The light bulb. I could swear it was blinking. It looks fine to me. Huh. I gotta do everything myself around here. Yeah, you should definitely check that light bulb again. What do you want me to do? Blow on it? Yes. Just a forgotten towel. A forgotten towel. It's empty. Anything else? Okay. So we have another ghost in here. Man, we have a lot of ghosts lying around. Hey, friend, can we talk for a second? Are you sure there's nothing wrong with that light? No. Nope. I'm no expert, but it looks fine to me. <sighs> well, what can I do for you? Uh, what's your obsession with lights? So what's the story with the lights? I don't know. It's driving me crazy. There's something wrong with them. I can tell. Well, like I said, they look totally fine to me. I'll just have to keep checking. Keep checking. Are you Peter Fielding, by the way? Hey, is your name Peter Fielding by any chance? That's me. Why? <laughs> no reason. You own this joint, right? Yes, I do. My dad built it. You could say it's a family business. Been running it around 20 years? Seems like yesterday. 20 years, eh? And I wonder who owns it now? It's a pretty nice place, though. Kind of small, but it'll do. Nice place you got here. Thanks. You looking to join? Ah, no, I really don't think exercise is going to do me much good. It's amazing how many people think that. You're young, your metabolism is still going strong, but time catches up with you before you know it. You're preaching to the choir, Peter, but I'm still not interested. Well, we're here if you need us. I think time really caught up on you, Peter. Uh, with that light bulb. It's so pretty. Look at that light. It's mesmerizing. So, how are you feeling? Fine, why? You don't feel strange at all? A bit dead? What do you mean? Well, just hypothetically speaking, you don't feel like you're gonna explode? What, like indigestion? Not quite. I am on a strict diet of wheatgrass shakes and fiber. Indigestion is the last thing I have to worry about. So healthy. Well, it doesn't matter now, you're dead. So, you run this place with your old man, huh? Sort of. He built it when he left the army. I took over long ago. I wonder if he's still alive. Can we go have a chat with him? So, you run this place with your old man, huh? Sort of. He built it when he left the army. I took over long ago. Twenty years, one might say. Well, let's talk about these people that you might recognize. Hey, I think I met a friend of yours. Father Michael Cooper? Michael? Now there's a name I haven't heard in a while. How is he? He's seen better days. I'm sorry to hear that. 
He'll pull through. He always has. Well, he's doing a bit better than you, seeing that he's still alive. Do you know anything about Benjiro? Ran the Grace Group meetings. Sure. Well? Um, funny. I can't think of anything to say, exactly. It's been 20 years. Sure, people forget things. That's it, exactly. I just didn't think it would happen to me so soon. I wouldn't exactly say too soon, but they went to those meetings 20 years ago? I thought it was more recent. Did you know Jeffrey Dutta? You know Jeff, too? Not really, I just heard of him. Good guy. Took care of my neighbor's dog when she was on vacation. I see. Oh yeah, because he was a... Uh, he was a Wall Street broker, but then he wanted to be a professional dog walker. Did you know... You know... No, okay. Good guy. Good guy. So tell me about yourself, Peter. I'm the guy who's gonna, gonna kick, kick your, your butt in this shit. Oh no! Ah, well, we'll see. We shall see. Do you know Heather Goffstein? You know Heather too. <laughs> Who don't you know? Eh, ah, well, I'm a people person. Wow, Heather. Haven't heard that name in a long time. Apparently it has been a pretty long time since they went to their meetings. And then they went on with their lives and careers, and then they died. All of them. Well, except for Michael, but that's gonna happen soon, probably. I don't know if we're gonna be able to save them. Save him. Him, Michael. Michael. I hear Tanya Corsi went to this gym. She's been coming here for years. That body you see on TV? I take full credit for that. Well, we all gotta be proud of something. That's true. Too bad he's, she's dead, as well. I wonder what happened to her. Ever hear of the Grace Group? I understand you went to a few meetings. <gasps> you know about that? I know about everything. Sure. Wow. Well, yeah. I went to some meetings. It was all I needed. Why's that? Well, I wasn't the most focused of people back then. It's a long story, but in the end, I went to work with my dad running this place. It's been my life ever since. Okay. Is there anything... Is there any... What's to say? Changed your life. You ever go to the Karth house? Dumpy place in Chelsea. No, sorry. I haven't been to the village in years. Fair enough. I don't know if we can talk about anything else. We've talked to you about everything. So tell me about... I'm the guy. Ah. Ah. So, you run... Sort of. Well, I'll see you around. You got it. I'll be here. I just gotta see what's wrong with this damn light. Dude, leave the light alone. What did it do to you, man? So, I found Peter. Peter? Peter Fielding? Yeah, he's safe and sound. Sort of. Spiritually speaking, anyway. Yeah. Huh. Michael was sure that Peter's ghost was taken. Just between you and me, Michael doesn't look to be sure about very much. Michael seems to be losing it. Hmm. Come here for a minute. Come here. What? You wanna get a few rounds in while we're here? <laughs> I'm not exactly dressed for the gym, Joey. Excuses, excuses. I like how Joey sometimes makes fat jokes on Rosa because he's just amusing that way. Don't know who this Heather lady is, but Michael's convinced she's a lost cause. She could be, but he didn't actually see it happen. She might be alright. For a dead guy, Peter's in pretty good shape. Let's make sure he stays that way. True, we wouldn't want another ripped soul, although he is pretty ripped. Haha. <laughs> Jeffrey Dutta. That's three spooks destroyed that we know of anyway. We need to put a stop to this before it becomes four. True. Huh. Michael's gotten himself shackled to Madeline, poor guy. Why do you say that? Remember her last host? The Countess? The mass-murdering crazy lady? I remember, but Michael won't turn out the same way. Easy enough to say, but keep your eye on both of them. Just in case. Just in case. And it, it wasn't the the... It wasn't Madeline's fault, per se. Just the Countess kind of went crazy and she just wanted to dance. Dance. The Deacon, Gavin, Charlie Meltzer, and now Ben Giro. It always comes down to one guy, doesn't it? Let's find him so we can give him a piece of our mind. So Ben Giro is kind of like coming out as the game bad guy. Although we don't know anything about him because no one seems to remember anything. 
You ever watch this Tanya Corsi show? No, her show was on in the morning and I'm more of a night person these days. Yeah, pretty much. Because of Joey. Huh. What okay, remember? I remember. Easy. What about Heather, Peter, Jeffrey? Jeffrey Dutta, that's the we... Oh, well, we talked about everything. You take note of those names Michael gave us? They're in my phone. If sure, that's what... Okay, so we need to check all of those names out. Maybe I should go back to the spook in George's apartment. Now that we know her name, she's busted. So, have you heard of this Tanya Corsi person? Tanya Corsi? Was she in the gym? No, it's the name of our roof spook. Is she famous or something? You could say that. She has a TV show. I think you mean she had a TV show. Let's get going. Let's get going. To his apartment. Joey? Ooh, ominous music. Hey yo, Tanya. How's it hanging, girl? Hi there. Hello again, mister. What, what brings, brings you by? by? So I heard you're uh, famous or something. You're Tanya Corsi, aren't you? Ah, <sighs> I knew you'd get it. That's me, Tanya Corsi, host of the Good Morning Show on Channel 11. Now all the mystery is gone. Not m by much, because, um, yeah, I don't know what you do. Are you sure you don't know- No, please stop. Well, at least I can explore my notes now. Do you know anything about a self-help organization called the Grace Group? Grace Group? No, I haven't. Sorry. So she wasn't a part of these, uh, meetings. Interesting. Why did she die? So, Tanya, tell me about yourself. <laughs> You want to get to know the real Tanya Corsi. Hell yeah. The Tanya that you don't read about in the tabloids and magazines? Ooh yeah. If you let me. I barely know you, Mr. Malone. Although if you swing by more often, you might learn a thing or two. I'm gonna swing by two more times, probably. Do you know a Michael Cooper? I don't. Sorry. <sighs> Does the name Benjiro ring any bells? Benjiro? I believe so. Sorry, I... Nope. But she might know something about Peter Fielding. So, I heard you go to Peter Fielding's gym. I do. Or rather, I did. After what happened to him, I just couldn't... You mean his... Death? Yes. So senseless. So she died after Peter. Interesting. Do you know a guy named Jeffrey Dutta? Hmm. Do you know a Heather Goffstein? No. No, I don't. Sorry. Come on. You that do. note on the floor, it has Heather written on it. So? Like I told you, it has no meaning to me. I don't know any Heather. She's getting upset. And it's in your apartment! You are not telling me everything. Do you know a- No. Come so, I don't know- They never want to tell me anything. Do you know a guy- Hmm. Fine. Do you know any- Great. Uh. Come on, tell me something about yourself. Must be nice for someone like you to be asked a question for once. You've been doing nothing but ask questions since you came in here. Huh, fair point. Huh. You ever go to the Karth house? Sorry, no. Why were you smiling? Well, Tanya, I have to get going, but I'll see you around. Ta. Ta. You're gonna tell me who Heather is. Fine, let's go back. Where should we go next? Either the police, again, for more info. Or the priest? I'm not exactly sure. Outside. Hmm, police, gym, gray school. Let's go to gray school. Ah, you have returned. Yes. We found one of the Grace Group spooks, Peter Fielding. I see. Is he still... intact? Yeah, he tried to get me to join a gym. I thought as much. You thought so? What do you mean? You know as well as I do. A spirit cannot be moved from this world until it is spiritually ready. It would appear that is also the case here. It's always the case. But what about George and Leah? From my understanding, they were aware of their death when they were taken. Yep. Yeah, they were. Instantly. Then there's your answer. They were spiritually ready to leave this world, and so were vulnerable. This... Fielding, was it? 
He is a lucky soul indeed. Until he is made aware, he cannot be taken. Not by you, or by anyone else. Interesting, so they become vulnerable once they realize they're dead. So wait, this is our fault? Whatever do you mean? Leah, George, just by trying to save them, we destroyed them. I suppose. Yes, it could be seen that way. But please, do not blame yourself. How could you have known? Ignorance doesn't change anything. Listen to me. Whatever or whoever is taking these souls, they were marked long before they died. All we can do now is move forward and save who we can. Poor guys. So what? We just leave the spook to rot? Of course not. It has been known for some spirits to become aware on their own. The right face, the right moment, anything can trigger it. And if that happens to Fielding, no. Our duty is to save him, and save him we shall. How? The usual rules have been chucked out the window. We make a move and he gets hammered, and we're not gonna let that happen, not again. It is a dilemma for certain. That's, uh, yeah, that's pretty bad. Oh, so, by making him realize he's dead, we're putting him in danger. You've been around the block a few times, so to speak. Nothing like this has ever happened to you before? The destruction of the very essence of life. No. Such a thing is difficult to contemplate, and to witness it, even more so. Yeah, it's pretty scarring, I'll say. We need to think about this, plan our next move. Of course. In fact, I might have an idea along those lines. I must confer with my host. Please excuse me. Of course. Uh, maybe we should go in and, as well. Lafayette Street looks cold and icy. Better stick to the sidewalk. Better stick to the sidewalk. Side sidewalk. Hey guys. He's okay? Peter's really okay? He is still deceased. But in all other respects, yes. He is as well as can be. This changes everything. You have no idea. You two, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I never even considered that Peter's soul could be saved. And maybe Heather too. Yes, Heather. If she wasn't taken, then her soul must still be lost. And this is a good thing? Of course. If a soul is merely lost, it still can be saved. And maybe, so can mine. Maybe. We haven't found Heather yet, so we don't know what happened to her. So, what's your plan? We are approaching this from ignorance, and possibly from fear. Before I was trapped in the void, I was a spirit guide for a very long time. I can learn much from a spirit by looking at it, and talking to it. If Fielding's soul still exists, then it must be brought here. And Heather. Heather's soul must still be out there. And her as well, of course. Let's go to the gym, guys. Get in shape. Peter Fielding's spook is at the gym. It's not too far away. You can talk to him there. Are you kidding? I step out of this circle, who knows what could happen? If I die, there's a good chance I'll be an aware spirit, just like Leah and George, and then... Be at peace, my host. I would not ask you to do such a thing. Well, thank heaven for that. Besides, it is unnecessary. As you say, only spiritually aware souls are attacked. Since this fielding is not spiritually aware, meeting him in his current state would be fruitless. We need to awaken him before I can determine anything about him. Yeah, won't he, like, get taken if we do that? Um, won't awakening these ghosts destroy him? Aren't we trying to avoid that? Don't be absurd. We'll put them behind this circle. They will be safe there. And how are we supposed to do that? Spooks like me can't enter the thing. This might surprise you, Malone, but I did think of that. Come here. Take this. What's this thing? Call it a... totem. It was made with some of my essence. The circle was created in much the same manner, so it will make a perfect focus. When you awaken a spirit, use the totem to send them directly here. They will remain safely behind the circle until we can determine the next course of action. So I'll be trapped in this circle with Peter and Heather's ghosts? I am afraid so, my host. Well, I suppose it can't be helped. And I guess it will be nice to see them again. Yes. Yes, indeed. Is there anything else you can tell me about Peter? Anything that can help us? No. Of all the people in our group, Peter was the one I spoke to the least. I think George once belonged to his gym. Even took personal training sessions for a while. But George wasn't really the personal fitness type. 
Is there anything else you can tell me about Peter? Anything that can help us? No. Of all the people in our group, I think but What about Heather? I need to know everything you can tell me about Heather. Well, there was one thing. It was a confession of sorts, you see, and she trusted me. Tell what me. What was it? You don't understand. It was a confession. It might have been a long time ago, but it was still a sacred trust. Dude. I can't betray that trust. It goes against everything I believe in. Dude. Don't you think that under the circumstances, she would understand? I'm not sure God would. Does it really matter? What's the worst that could happen? You lose your soul. My God, when you put it like that. Heather was a prostitute. Oh. She wanted to confess, but didn't feel right entering a church. She might have been Jewish, judging by her name, but I think she just wanted to speak to someone who understood. Understood? Someone who had been to Grace Group meetings. Someone who had had a life-changing revelation, like I did. I don't know what her revelation was, but she wanted to purge herself of her old life. So she asked if I could come to her apartment and listen to her. So I did. Do you remember where she lived? I was a priest entering the house of a prostitute. It's not something you forget. She lived by Tompkins Square Park. Here's the address. Hey, we have a new address, and Heather was a prostitute. Interesting. Is there anything else you can tell us about Heather? Anything at all? I just know she was a prostitute when she went to Grace Group meetings. I don't know what's happened to her since. I wonder what her revelation career was after being a prostitute, of course. Is there anything you can tell me about Peter? Anything that can help? No. I think, but... Okay, fair enough. So the man who ran the Grace Group... Yeah, Japanese guy. No one can remember anything. Did you ever watch Tanya Corsi's show? No, sorry. He doesn't seem like the Tanya Corsi kind of guy. I think this is uh, everything we can talk to you about. I guess we should get going. Then I do believe our talk is concluded. I will return outside. Yes, return um, outside. Hey, Madeline? Yes, my host. It's all right. All right? Yeah, stay inside. It's cold out there. I don't feel the cold, my host. I know. I know. Just stay, please, and thanks. It is my pleasure, my host. Aww. Finally, Madeline's being treated nicely. Okay, we have a new location. Let's visit Heather and... Uh, uh, I hope she hasn't been taken. Heather, 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 where is she? Here she is. Oh, and I already see her. Yep. That's her. Some nasty spikes up there. I'm not climbing over it for sure. For sure. Joey, you can just go through them. Hey, how'd you get in? She's beautiful. Ah, hello, miss. Answer my question. How'd you get in? Oh, the gate was open. Is that all right? Sure, I guess. Just be sure to close it when you leave. I don't want to get in trouble. You won't, don't worry. The only trouble you're facing is realizing you're dead, and then you will be erased from existence, but no pressure. Nice looking girl. I suppose that's an asset in her line of work. <laughs> Thanks, Joey. Excuse me, miss? Oh, hi. What's up? What's up? You sure you should be out here? Why shouldn't I be? It's perfect. It's so nice to finally have a night clear enough to enjoy this place. Clear night, right. Really clear. You live here? I do. Why? No reason, just making conversation. Is your name Heather Goffstein? Oh, I see. You came from Ray. Ray? Of course. You did come from Ray, right? Uh, Ray? Is that your pimp or something? She still thinks she's still in the mindset of her prostitute days, unfortunately. I came to see you. I don't know any Ray. I came to see you. Oh, well, that's sweet, I guess. But it doesn't matter. If you want a date, you'll need Ray's permission. A date? Isn't that why you're here? No, not at all. I just want to talk. Really? Really? Well, I suppose that's all right, but we should stay out here. If we don't go in the bedroom, then it's not a date. Okay. 
You don't seem surprised. You don't seem terribly surprised that I'm here in your garden. Hmm. It is a bit strange you appeared out of nowhere. But hey, I'm used to men appearing on my doorstep. And for some reason, you seem safe. Safe? Yeah, just a vibe. Huh, thanks I guess. And just a vibe. So, tell me about yourself. So, tell me a bit about yourself, Heather. Can we not, please? Let's just enjoy the evening, okay? It's nice out here. Sure. No problem. I understand you don't want to talk about what you do. Do you know a guy named Peter Fielding? Runs a gym in Murray Hill. I can't really say one. I could get into trouble. So, tell me about this Ray character. I really shouldn't. Ray is really exclusive with the clients we're given. I shouldn't have told you the name. Oh, come on. So, tell me about this Ray character. I... Ray? Mm. Do you know a guy... I can't... I... What about Benjiro? Do you know a guy named Benjiro? I can't really say one way or... I could get it. She's not gonna tell us anything? Can you tell me about Grace Group? Yeah, you were a member, right? Sorry, I don't know what that is. Come on, think. You met in the basement of Grace Church. What, like AA? I'm not an alcoholic, thank you. So she doesn't remember. Interesting. What happened, like, to her at the meetings? That she reverted back to her fun days. Her wild girl days. Do you know what Tanya- I don't think so. Okay, okay. Well, Heather? Sure. I'd leave the gate open, but for some reason, I don't think that would be a problem for you. Not as such, no. So, um, hmm. We know about a little bit about Ray, which I'm guessing is her pimp, because that she got. Ooh, hey, the totem. Because she got her clients from Ray. Madeline said she used a bit of her essence to activate that circle, and that this totem would zap spooks into it. So we have a spook zapping item. That's badass. But I think the only person that could help us with the pimp finding situation is Pro Professor Palmer. He's not a professor. He's an officer. Officer Palmer? Yeah, yeah. What can I do for you? Yeah, yeah. Do you know anything about someone named Ray? I don't know who he is, but I think he's involved with prostitution. Prostitution? Is this related to Leah's case? I don't know. It could be. This just gets better and better. Oh, yeah. Anyway, Ray, let's take a look. Okay, the name Ray definitely comes up in the Vice Department database. There was a raid on a bar called Vantini a few years ago, and someone named Ray was taken in for questioning. No charges were made. Just Ray? No last name? No. Whoever Ray is, that's his full legal name. Anyway, here's the address of the bar if you need it. Thanks. Sure. Well, I, I guess it's better than nothing. Let's go to well, the I bar. Better. Sure. I could go for a glass of wine. Oh wait, I have it right here next to me. Mmm. Delicious. Vantini. Sounds like a fancy place, but I know what kind of people go there now, so it's not a fancy place. I can't see much, but it seems much warmer in there than it is out here. Well, maybe Rosa can finally go into a warm place. this, Denise. Someone brave enough to join us in this weather. Well, brave or stupid anyway. Uh, right. Are you Ray? I like your attitude, man. She looks kind of young to be working at a place like this. <laughs> I just noticed the pictures on the walls. Whoever this was, he signed it, thanks for the tie, with love, A.G. Lovely. If I'm not mistaken, this is the guy that voices Joey. I think so. Nice photo. Nice little Easter egg. It's a painting of a woman dancing. It's dedicated to someone named Mistress B. Mistress B. I wonder if it's another uh, Easter egg, but I can't really place the reference right now. Looks like some kind of promotional poster for a burlesque. Burlesque act. Hi. Hey, what can I get for you? Uh, a big strong drink. So what can you tell me about this place? It's old. Quiet. I 
like it that way. Really? Yeah. I work on my thesis most nights. Honestly, I'm surprised a big place like this can stay open. It's always empty. It doesn't really seem like a big place. There's only like three tables. Do you know Ray? Ray? Yeah. Is he here? No. No, he is not. Hmm. Uh, I better not drink. I need to keep a clear head. How about a coffee or something? No thanks, I already have one. Hmm, I see. I already have one, and I drank about ten million this morning. Do you know Heather Gopstein? Sorry, I don't. Okay. Well, thanks. I better get going. I don't know if you're very useful. They've got a pretty varied selection, although I wouldn't really know. My criteria for picking out wine is, has pretty label and under 20 bucks. I think most people go by that, uh, by that criteria when picking out wine. So, who are you? Excuse me. Hmm. Yes? Yes? I'm looking for Ray. Do you know where I can find him? Ray, huh? And why would you be looking for Ray? I need to talk to him. I can't go into specifics, but it involves a woman who worked for him. Worked for him, hmm? In what capacity? She was a working girl, Heather Gofstein. She worked for Ray, and now she's dead. Hmm, I see. Worked is the appropriate word, I suppose. Heather left my employ a long time ago. Your employ? Yes. You want to speak to Ray? She's right in front of you. The former Rachel Mendez at your service. Interesting. So, uh, Ray is a woman. Pimp slash madam. So you work here? Not directly, but I suppose I'm as much a fixture here as anything else. So Heather worked for you. Can you tell me about her? It's been, gosh, several years. I'm afraid I can't tell you much. She was very young. Very pretty. Slightly lost, perhaps, like many of my girls. She's really dead? How did it happen? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Is this a police matter? Not directly. I'm working with them, but I'm pretty much on my own. Well, in that case, ask me whatever you like. Interesting. So she left your employ years ago, but she died recently? You said Heather left your employ. Could you explain? Just that. She packed up and left. And you were okay with that? You think I would drag her back against her will? Absolutely not. And what would be the point? I replaced her the next week. It's the nature of this business. Some girls try the life, discover it's not for them, and then leave. Some stay for years and it grinds them alive. But occasionally, with luck and persistence, one can flourish. Like I did. Interesting. I, I don't... I hope we won't get to talk about your uh, flourishing days. Please don't. Did Heather have any enemies? An obsessive client or anything? I suppose anything is possible, but not likely. I screen our clients very carefully, and I keep very careful records. Are you still in the business? How does this business work, exactly? There's no bedroom upstairs, if that's what you are asking. I own several apartments in the city. I give the girls room and board in exchange for the money they receive. Some of them skim. Hell, all of them skim. But I make sure to treat them well. They treat me well in return. I'm not sure if I like you or not, because it is a very shady business, but you seem okay. I would I would have a drink with you. You seem interesting. Just because you're an old man. If you kept careful records, does that mean you have a list of Heather's clients somewhere? No. I'm sorry, but no. I really need that client list. I really need that client list. Absolutely not. I give a premium product, and our clients expect premium service. Privacy is part of that service. That client list stays in my office where it belongs. And where might your office be? I really need that. I private that. Fine. Don't you want to know what happened to Heather? That client list could help. You have no reason to suspect one of her clients had anything to do with it. You can't even tell me how she died. I won't betray my client's trust based on a flimsy guess. So, we kind of have to figure out what happened to Heather. Maybe a client killed her so we can find get the client list from Ray. Oh, but then we have to take care of Heather. Not to, you know, 
the soul ripping part. I could bring in the police. I'd like to see you try. Every few years they try and raid this place, make a show of getting tough, but nothing sticks. I make sure of that. Okay, you're kind of getting a bit scary. Let's leave her for the moment. Well, I guess that's everything. For now. Sorry I can't help you. For what it's worth, I liked Heather. I'm sad she's dead. I suppose a drink to her memory is in order. Care to join me? Thanks, but no. Hmm. More for me then. Denise, one gimlet please. You know how I like it. Oh, what was the gimlet? It is an actual cocktail. I think it's really good. I remember what was in it though. Check it out. Google it or something. Well, Joey, anything uh, to say about this case with the working girls? Got a sec. What is it? You think they'd have coffee in a place like this? Only with whiskey in it, maybe. That's my kind of coffee. And they do have coffee. She just offered you some, Rosa. Are you drunk already? Hmm. So I guess this Ray person is Heather's boss? I suppose you could call it that, yeah. That's the classy way to put it. But I will leave it uh, here, guys. Thanks for watching, leave some feedback, and I will see you in the next episode.